Hello again, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to the very last lesson in Unit 7 Array List. This is Lesson 7, the insertion sort. So we're going to go over our second sorting algorithm today. Um, and let's jump right into what it is and how we do it, right? So it's a simple sorting algorithm, kind of like our selection sort as well. That was another simple sorting algorithm um, that builds the final sorted array one element at a time. Okay. Um, it's very useful for small data sets um, or data sets that are actually partially sorted already. Um, it is very efficient in those scenarios. Um, the idea is to basically divide the array, whatever array you're trying to sort, into two parts. Um, the sorted portion and the unsorted portion. And it moves through um, the unsorted portion and inserts items into the correct sorted position. It's the basic idea of it, um, is it insorts it into the correct sorted array. Here's the steps for it. I like to think of it as like a little file folder. So I have a picture there to kind of remind you of it. So the insertion sort algorithm actually starts with the second element at index one. And we call that the current element. What it's going to do is at that current element, it's going to compare that element with everything in the sorted portion, which is going to be to the right of that current index. Okay, So it's going to compare everything to the right. It's basically going to look through that the index to the right and says, OK, where does this element fit in that sorted position? Okay, And it's going to insert the element into that correct sorted position. So again, I think of a file folder, right? If I have a file and I want to organize it, I look through my file folders and I put it in the correct spot. And that's what insertion does. Insertion takes an element, it looks through the sorted array, and it inserts it at the correct spot. Okay? And then it moves on to the next element, looks into the sorted array, puts it in the correct spot. That's insertion sort. And it, you repeat those steps until you're done with your unsorted array. But as always, those are the words for the algorithm. Let's go through a visual with an example. It probably is going to look a little bit better. So here's our example, 10, 5, 9, and 2. Small example. Let's use the insertion sort on here. So we're going to start at 5. Um, that is our current item at index 1. Okay. We're going to compare it to the previous item, which is element 10. Um, it asks the question, is 5 less than 10? And it is. So because the previous item is greater than the current item, we're going to swap those two values. So the 5 goes there, and then the 10 gets put into 5's position. Once our current item is at the beginning of the list, our current index moves up to 2. Okay? So we used to be at index 1. Now we are at index 2 as our current item. So now we're going through the loop again. Okay, 9 is our current element. It compares it to 10. It looks back because everything to the um, left is going to be sorted and everything to the right is going to be unsorted. So this is where it looks back and figures out where to insert it. So comparing to 10, um, 9 is less than 10 Okay, or 10 is greater than 9. So you're going to swap them. Okay, so your current item is 9, and you compare with your previous item of 10. And you don't swap them because you're in the correct order. Okay, so again, we're looking back. This is how your algorithm is going to pick out the file of where to insert it. It's going to keep looking back at the previous item and say, okay, is 9 less than 10? Perfect. Is 9 less than 5? No. Okay, then that means that 9 is in the correct position. We have inserted the file into where it's supposed to be. So that section stops, that loop stops, and I move up one. Okay. So that loop of inserting right into the correct position, it stops when your current item is at the beginning of the list or once the correct order is reached. Okay. And then your current item um, your current index moves up one. Okay, so first our current index was 
index 1. Then our current index was index 2. Now our current index is index 3. Okay? Our current item is 2, but the current index is index 3. And again, we compare. So we're going to do a series of comparisons and swaps. So I compare 2 to 10. 2 is less than 10. So I swap them. Okay? Then I compare 2 to 9. Okay? 2 to 9, 2 is less than 9. So I swap them. I compare 2 to 5. 2 is less than 5. I swap them. And then I'm done because it reached the beginning of the list. Okay? Or I would stop once the correct order has been reached, once that element is no longer less than the previous element. Okay? Um, you can think of it, it keeps going until it hits the correct spot. Okay? Hits the correct spot. And now you're done because your index is done. Right? That's, that was the last index, so the loop stops. Okay. So again, you're going to see um, with this code um, a nested loop. Okay. We have a loop, the outer loop controls, um, controls the um, index, right? So we got index 1. Um, when we went to index 2 with the 9, excuse me, index 2 right here, and then when we went to index 3, that outer loop is going to control those index, indexes. Your inner loop is going to control your insertion until it hits the correct spot. You keep going until it hits the correct location of that ordered list. Okay? So here's the code for it. Again, like I said in, in selection sort, don't worry so much about memorizing the code. Um, you probably will if you use it enough, but you really want to be able to make sure you can read this and understand what it is saying. And then you also want to have a working understanding of what insertion sort is. Okay? So here's our outer loop that controls the current index. So notice again, it starts at 1 and goes all the way through the last, um, the last index. Okay? So I started at 1, went to 3. Okay? Um, I'm going to call it key, but that's going to be my current element that I'm at. Okay? And then I want to look back on the left side, so the lower half of my array, to figure out where to insert it. So that's why j is going to be i minus 1, is it's going to be, again, if you have, um, I forget what the, was it something like this? If this is your i, i would be equal to 2 right here, your index. J is going to be one less than. So you're going to start here and you're going to look, okay, where do I insert it? Oh, excuse me, this should already be sorted if that's the case, but you get know what I'm saying. We're going to have a while loop because you might be doing it once or 10 times or 100 times. You're going to keep moving that item over until it hits the correct spot. Okay, So there were two conditions, right, where that loop stops. When J became zero, meaning you hit the beginning of the list, um, or it stopped when your input, your current value was greater than your key, meaning that um, you've reached the spot. So if you had a 5, 10, 9, and 2, okay, 9 is your current element, j minus i, j equals i minus 1, 9, which is our key, is less than that, so that's true. You're going to do a swap, okay? And then you're going to stop if this becomes larger, the key becomes larger than the input, which it would when it reached 5, okay? So while both of these are true, while we haven't reached the beginning and while your um, item before is still greater than what you're trying to move through, uh, you want to keep going. You want to keep going with those swaps. So you'll swap the two positions, they'll be right next to each other. So you'll swap them, and then you'll move J down one. Okay, And then you'll repeat that whole process until it inserts at the correct position. Okay, Once it inserts at the correct position, um, then we move our index up one, um, and we get a new, um, a new value. Excuse me, this finishes the swap, by the way. Okay, so your swap, these three lines represent your 
um, your swap that you're essentially doing here, okay? It's just normally we see the swapping algorithm three lines in a row. These three are your swapping. Your key is kind of acting like your temp there as your temp variable as you do your swap, okay? But those represent your, your swaps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, usually how we see these on the AP exam, you'll get some sort of version of this sort insertion sort. Usually they tell you it's an insertion sort. Sometimes you have to kind of recognize it. Um, but they really want to know, do you have a working understanding of what the insertion sort, sort is? So could you trace through an example and tell me, okay, after three passes of the outer loop, what does the array look like? So. Those are the types of questions you'll be asked, and those are usually what we'll practice in class here. Okay, one last little bit on selection versus insertion, the two sorting algorithms we've talked about. Both of them have what we call quadratic time complexity. And even though we don't talk about time complexity in AP computer science, it is an important thing to touch on when you're trying to compare which algorithms work the best. Okay? Um, we determine which algorithms work the best based on the, the amount of time it takes for a computer to execute them. Okay? So a quadratic time complexity um, is most efficient for small or maybe partially sorted data sets. Um, it's still a pretty high time complexity. Um, the selection sort does have fewer swaps. The insertion sort, you're kind of swapping a lot, right, until you reach that correct position. Um, but the insertion sort does adapt very well to almost completely sorted arrays. Um, for large data sets, both of these are actually pretty inefficient because of the number of swaps they do. So usually merge sort um, or quick sort is best for large data sets um, just because they have better time complexities, meaning um, it doesn't take as long to do the sorting. Okay. And again, time complexity not talked about on the exam. It's great to look up if you're interested in that. Um, you know, there's whole college courses dedicated to algorithm time complexity. So it's a pretty neat topic, but we're not going to get into that right now. We will talk about merge sort in unit 10. Uh, merge sort is recursive, so we have to talk about what recursion is first, and then we'll talk about merge sort. Um, but other sorting algorithms that you'll run into um, essentially work the same way, but a little different. So you can look those up at your heart's desire. Um, they are pretty interesting, but we're going to focus on selection and insertion sort here. So thank you guys so much for following along. That actually brings us to the end of this lesson and the end of unit seven as a whole. And with that, I will see you in the next unit.